Hello and welcome to the Cinematic Summary Channel. In this video, we'll give you an easy and quick rundown of another critically acclaimed film. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Stanton Carlyle, a manipulative and violent charlatan in 1940s New York, finds his way into a traveling carnival when he apprentices himself to a clairvoyant and her mentalist husband. Armed with new knowledge, he sets out to outwit Chicago's wealthy elite, including a dangerous tycoon. As his schemes escalate, he becomes involved with Lilith Ritter, an enigmatic psychoanalyst who pulls him into a dangerous tightrope act. Can Stanton escape the darkness of Nightmare Alley before it's too late? If you want to know this story, follow the video. The movie begins in a humble Midwestern house where Stanton Carlyle, our protagonist, sets fire to a corpse and burns everything. After taking a bus, he decides to stop at a nearby amusement park and enters one of the shows. Stan watches a savage man eating a live chicken in front of the audience, but as he leaves without paying, he encounters Bruno and Major. They scold him, but as a storm approaches, Bruno orders Stan to help with the hard work since they have few men. This is Clem Holtley, the carnival owner. When making the payment, he buys Stan's radio and offers him a job. This is Zena the Seer, who performs clairvoyance shows on stage, while below is her partner Pete, who is an alcoholic ex-mentalist. Zena uses cold reading and hypnosis tricks on people, but in the end, she always reveals the truth to the most impressed who seek her out. In a demonstration of his method, Pete makes detailed guesses about an object Stan carries and events from his past. Pete tells Stan that he created the ingenious coded language system to make it seem like he has mental powers. He and Zena warn Stan never to use these abilities when it comes to the dead, otherwise, people get hurt. Clem shows his aberrations to Stan, and also where he stores the ethanol used to make a fire in the presentations and the consumable alcohol. This is Molly Cahill and her stage performance with electric chains. Stan presents her with a new idea he came up with to improve the presentation. Molly approves the new piece she will do with Major. Stan is drawn to Molly and suggests a two-person act for hotels and showrooms, away from the carnival. When the carnival savage becomes ill, Clem summons Stan to help him get rid of him, and then the two go out to eat. The way any man can descend to the level of acting like a savage living in a cage in misery disturbs Stan. Clem explains he seeks alcoholics or drug addicts and lures them with promises of temporary employment, giving them alcohol mixed with opium. Then he uses their dependence to physically and mentally abuse them until they sink into madness and depravity, thus creating a new savage. One night, Pete teaches his tricks to Stan and asks him to get him a drink. When Stan snoops on Pete's notes, he warns him about the dangers of misusing his method, which has already left him seduced in the past. Stan accidentally gives Pete the wrong bottle of alcohol, and the old man dies after consuming the ethanol used for the presentations. One night, the police show up with a warrant to find illegalities in the carnival. When an inspector tries to arrest Molly for indecency, Stan Cold reads him and makes him give up, after using his new mentalism tricks. After, Stan declares his love for Molly and reiterates his plan to her. She accepts, and they leave the carnival behind. Two years later, Stan has reinvented himself as a success, performing for the wealthy elite of Chicago. He is now known as the Great Stanton, and Molly is his stage assistant, helping him with Xena and Pete's clairvoyance techniques. During one performance, Stan correctly guesses the details of an object belonging to Judge Kimball, who is in the audience with his psychologist, Dr. Lilith Ritter. Dr. Ritter interrupts the show and exposes the code system used between Molly and Stan, challenging him to guess what she has in her purse. Stan removes his blindfold, and claims not to use trickery while cold reading Dr. Ritter. Then, he successfully guesses the object and maintains his performance. After, Stan provokes Dr. Ritter by making personal statements about her in front of the audience. He also makes statements about a recent loss suffered by Judge Kimball, and, after a dramatic scene, everyone applauds him. Backstage, Molly gets upset with Stan for deviating from the script and putting on a fake spiritual show 
when a meeting request interrupts them. It's Judge Kimball, interested in Stan's psychic abilities. He offers to pay Stan handsomely to help him and his wife contact their deceased son. Stan accepts and takes Dr. Ritter's card. It disappointed Molly that Stan didn't tell the truth to the judge. Dr. Ritter receives Stan in her office, knowing he is a fraud, but she is curious to know how he guessed the object in her purse. Stan claims to have assumed there was a gun in the purse because of the way she held it and that, since she wasn't wearing a ring, she's a single woman who needs to feel secure. Stan is interested in the information Dr. Ritter has collected about Chicago's elite and the money they can bring. Dr. Ritter agrees to support Stan's scams in exchange for learning the truth about him through their therapy sessions. In a therapy session, Stan reveals his guilt over Pete's death and his hatred for his alcoholic father, whom he killed in his own home. Later, in his hotel room, Stan received a visit from Zena, Bruno, and Major. Zena reads tarot cards for Stan and cautions him to discontinue pretending to be a medium because the cards imply he will make choices from which there is no reversing. The next day, Stan goes to the Kimball's house and, with Dr. Ritter's help, conducts a spiritual session for Felicia Kimball. He tells her that her son misses them, but that they will reunite in the afterlife. Felicia thinks she's communicating with her son through Steve and tells him he left a void in her life when he passed away. Stan and Dr. Ritter begin an affair, and he entrusts her with the money from their fraud so that Molly won't notice. Later, Dr. Ritter calls Stan to tell him that Kimball wants to introduce him to a powerful friend named Ezra Grindle, who is also his client. Stan passes through security and meets Mr. Grindle, who subjects him to a polygraph test. To avoid the tests, Stan talks about Dory, Grindle's illegitimate lover, who ended up dying after a forced abortion. Later that night, Stan asks Ritter for concrete information about Grindle, but she refuses, saying he is an unstable and dangerous man. Ritter warns him that if he crosses the wrong people, any misstep could bring them down. Later, Stan enters Ritter's office and listens to recordings of her therapy sessions with Grinder. Armed with information about Dory, Stan begins to deceive Grindle, who offers him a lot of money to materialize his beloved before him. Stan creates a plan for Molly to pose as the fake Dory. In the plan, when Molly appears dressed as Dory, Stan will make Grindle kneel to pray, while Molly will leave the scene. Ritter advises that the more shocking the appearance, the less likely Grindle will be to approach her. Under the influence of Ritter, Stan begins to drink and sees her as a profitable ally. Another day, Molly learns about the plan and becomes uncomfortable with the idea of a hoax involving a dead person. Meanwhile, at Kimball's house, Felicia reminds her husband of what Stan had said about their reunion with their son in the afterlife. She then gets up, grabs a gun, shoots Mr. Kimball, and kills herself. During the night, Stan unlocks the gate to Grindle's garden for the appearance of Dory. Molly pleads with Stan not to do it, saying she's at her limit but eventually agrees to help him for the last time. Stan leads Grindle to the garden and asks him to concentrate and close his eyes while communicating with Dory. As Grindle speaks about his guilt, he reveals he had raped many women with whom he took out all his anger. Molly appears in the distance in the garden, dressed in white and bloody, to dramatize the forced abortion that Dory went through. When Stan asks Grindle to kneel and pray, he pushes him and grabs Molly. Upon realizing the hoax, Grindle slaps Molly in the face and calls Stan a cheater, threatening him with death and calling for his security. Stan beats Grindle until he passes out on the floor and runs under gunfire to his car with Molly. After hitting Grindle's security guard with the car, they abandon the car in an alley and Molly leaves Stan forever. Later, Stan meets Ritter and blames Molly for ruining his plan. Ritter hands Stan a bag filled with only $1 bills and begins recording as if in a therapy session with a tormented client. Stan discovers she had deceived him the whole time. Ritter stops the recording and shoots Stan, revealing that she did it for revenge, saying that Stan was arrogant to think he was powerful enough to expose her in front of a packed audience. 
Ritter calls the security guards and threatens to use the recording she made to prove Stan's mental disturbance. Stan attacks Ritter and attempts to strangle her with the phone cord until the security guards arrive and force him to flee. He escaped from the authorities despite his injuries and the cold temperatures outside. Stanton is left with nothing and nowhere to go, forced to live among the homeless, and thus spends years drinking and begging for change. One day, while wandering through the city, he comes across another carnival and asks for a job, saying he has experience as a clairvoyant performer. However, lacking the same confidence he had as the great Stanton years ago, the owner, who complains about Stan's urine smell, rejects him. Nevertheless, at the last minute, the owner offers him a drink and a temporary job, just until he finds a new savage. Then, the owner asks Stan if he knows what a savage is. Stan accepts the offer, saying, Lord, I was born for that, while letting out disturbed laughs. So, did you like the video? We'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the movie, so please leave a comment below. Also watch other of our summaries of the best movies in cinema. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.